Oh, he's got, got it. it! On the finger end! Well, re we are re-energized after talking to Nancy and her husband, even though they just lost their motor, their PMA is off the charts. Crazy. But we're gonna fish deep and work our way shallow and uh, go through the process of elimination and try and find these things. We're getting marks in 25 feet of water here, right on the bottom. So we'll see how the musky fishing goes for the next few hours but I get quite a bit of grief from people that don't really understand why I feel like I have to have two big graphs uh, to operate the way I do. And number one priority on the water is safety. You guys just saw what happened to Nancy and her husband. Okay, so when you're on a brand new body of water like this, like Lake of the Woods, I look at this place, man. It is obscenely big. There are so many hazards everywhere. And if you run too far out, you're not gonna be able to see that small rock that could potentially knock your motor off and, you know, worst case scenario, injure somebody. So the way I run my units is on my left screen, I run a full size topo map that's zoomed out so I can see the overlay of the land so I can navigate from point A to point B in the most efficient manner. And then here on the right, I'm running sonar. So I have a real time depth gauge, but I'm also running a topo map that's zoomed in. So I can see like, oh man, we're only 30 feet from that potential hazard versus then I can just glance. And at the same time, I can just glance and keep my eyes focused on what's in front of me. You know, especially when you're traveling at top speed, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. So don't scoff at the guys that are running these expensive units. Like they're a real tool, not only for locating fish, but also in staying safe. And like my buddy Scott just said, uh, these things are cheaper than a hospital bill. Or a new motor. Or a new motor. Or an insurance claim. Ugh, and look at that. Oh my goodness. See that? See All that right. guys? Oh, tip of an island. Cool. I'd like to see how I, uh, how I engage that right away. Self-grading? Yeah. Like, how did I do? Did I freak out and lift it up? Did that feel good? The vision here, he kind of turned on Kyle for a second. Yeah, he was hot on it. I've like, heard about that happening. like a half turn. I've heard about that happening so many times. Like, it, you know, turn it and hit the co-anglers figure eight. Yeah, the old bait switch. Cranking the uh, the bucktail here, and I had a nice follow. Probably low to low to mid 40s. Engaged the figure eight a little bit. Figure eight for I don't know two minutes or so, and kind of lifted up like that. And all of a sudden, it shot out and uh, chased uh, your bait for a second. So uh, yeah, I was hoping it nabbed it. I would have been very happy for you. <laughs> it's like a team sport sometimes. Like just got to enjoy it. We. You're flustered, man. I am. I'm excited. <laughs> it's exciting. You you work so freaking hard for these things. That's what we were talking on the dock. Like, you can truly enjoy like somebody else's success if you got the right mindset. Because you know they put their time in to catch it. You know they worked hard. You know they've been working hard. It doesn't matter who catches it. Yeah, it's nice to nab one. Now there will be plenty of hate mail on that bit. Ah, oh, I just missed one. Oh. Oh, I came oh, in! I got, him. I got him! I got him! I got the net. I got the net. Oh, I came up again! Oh! Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> You've got to be kidding me! That was I brutal. saw the second one. 
That was brutal. What happened? Good grief. We were just getting <laughs> over the hype of pulling a fish up. Almost getting on fluster. I just got drilled on this experimental wild lure. <laughs> and now it was flustered. Stuck it for a second and it didn't stick. Didn't penetrate the bar. Got about two or three cranks probably. And it came back and smashed it again and I hooked it. Man, it Size? Got its head out of the water. So I got in trouble. We're fishing really shallow right now. So that's the second time in the last few weeks where I've had one get its head above water and just shake it free. What do you size you think? Uh, I mean, you I saw it. Upper about 30s. A, yeah, it wasn't a monster, so I'm not heartbroken, but still bummed we didn't get it, but still pumped that I got bit twice. Look at this. <laughs> I concocted this after that thing has been pulling attention and I feel like the added profile, bulk, vibration, and presence should uh, get these fish to engage it. And you notice the uh, same size blades? You engage it. I mean, those are fluted, but... Yeah. Oh, man. Look at that. Well, I got <laughs> Not sharp? Now, I just snagged this bait on one of these shallow rocks. Who knows? There's a one in six chance that was a hook point I stuck them on and it's it's kind of folded over so it's important to keep a hook file it's not that difficult to just hit these bronze hooks with the file get that sticky sharpness back ah oh, man savage luckily i've caught a couple bigger ones than that so i'm not that butt hurt and it was still a cool sequence Yep, yep, yep. Really hooked. Oh, he's up, he's up. Yes! That's a big pike, bro! Holy, Holy crap! Shit. That is a monster pike! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Dude, that is a big pike. Ooh. Nice job. That was crazy, man. That's my last I can day. see it. I'm like, he's barely hooked. <laughs> Dude. Holy crap. Look, look at that. That, thing. That, is a, that is a cool fish. We're on a little bit of a bite, people. Uh, just getting these hooks out of the net before I handle the fish. I don't want him flopping around, rehooking himself. Rehooking me. That happens. That's a big Just get this out of the way. Show me what you got it on. Old school. Old school. It's kind of like the Senko of the musky fishing world. Uh, we caught him off of a, kind of like a rocky point, like underwater rock pile uh, point with a little bit of wind on it for a couple days. We just had those couple follows and Oliver and I just about called the shot. We said there should be something living on this pile here. Got a different angle on it. That was an interesting thing. We made a uh, so you got the rock pile kind of like this, dissecting cast. We were pretty much casting almost 90 degrees to it. Then we got around the front side and hit him with another Let angle. me interrupt for a second. We're going to get this thing uh, Oh yeah, give him, breath. Some, give him a breath. Thank you. Here you go. While well, you tell the story. That's the nice thing about these big ranger nets. Look at this. This is a boat side live well. Just let that thing catch your breath. You can continue with your story, my You man. know, we were debating on if it was dinner or not. Because <laughs> so, he just uh, had his first pike. I know, and it was awesome, uh, but I think he's a little big. I don't know. We'll, we can take a boat on that. I agree. I think he's a little big. Hey, Let's let him uh, stay, stay him, stay in the gene pool, huh? Absolutely. 
So yeah, obviously, you know, we're in a bass boat and these live wells just aren't really designed with these 30 to 60 inch fish potentially in mind. So having these big, deep rubber netting uh, ranger nets is invaluable. Makes it easy on everybody. Us, the fish. Oh, there you go. Look at you. You're gonna need more than that. I bet it's past 35. Uh, I was gonna go. I'm gonna go 38. I'm gonna go high 30s, yeah. 37. I'm splitting the difference. Got what's your. Uh, I'll go 38. Oh, I know. Fine, I got 30. Well, I was gonna say 40 until you guys were both under. I'll do 39. <laughs> this, this ranger net is so deep, he could just submerge on me. Anytime you get to use a measuring board, it's a good day. Oh, he's got, got, it. got it! On the figure eight! Looking. There we go, here we go. Oh! oh. 